Hi, this is Jurius Doctor, and today we're going to talk about the Amar and their ships. The Amar. This is a core class, core standing for Capsular Orientation Related Education. It's a curriculum that's been developed by EVE University, and it's designed to give brand new players and EVE an introduction to the game content and game mechanics that'll help you through your game career. Core classes are designed to be easily understandable, and this visual guide is here to help you through the course material. The whole purpose of this class being to make you a better capsuleer. The core classes library has 18 classes which have been designed for you to observe, participate in, or practice in order to grow your knowledge of the gameplay. You can attend these classes live at Eve University, and I've provided the link here to their voice settings and their course calendar. To attend a core class, you can join the lecture.etechuni chat channel, which is where you'll ask questions during the class so the teacher can get to them. You can download and install Mumble and join their voice server. And please follow the EVE University communications policy, which basically boils down to don't be a dick. I will be recording these classes so that those who are unable to attend a live class can follow along on YouTube. This course will cover a brief background of the Empire, key characteristics of the MR ships, how to identify hull characteristics, primary weapon systems, armor tanking, Amarian electronic warfare, and fitting examples. By the time this class is done, you should have familiarized yourself with the basics of Amarian technology and ship design. The Amar are the oldest continuously active faction in New Eden and the largest. That is, they are the oldest among those that the players can engage with. Their earliest records go back almost to the collapse of the Eve Gate, which is about 23,000 years ago. Their religious empire, a theocratic monarchy led by Empress Katiz I of Tashmar Khan. They are religiously and economically motivated slavers and slave holders. Slaves make up a significant portion of their workforce. They're very anachronistically similar to 16th century Spaniards, driven by a lust for gold, glory, and God. Let's talk about the key characteristics of Amar ships. Their primary weapon systems are energy turrets and drones, energy turrets being big freaking laser. Amarian vessels favor an armor tank. They are some of the strongest tanks in EVE. However, they are also similarly some of the slowest ships in EVE because all of that weight and all of that armor adds mass to the ship. Their racial electronic warfare focuses on weapon disruption and capacitor warfare. Weapon disruption being the disruption of your enemy ship's targeting system so that they cannot engage with you effectively. Capacitor warfare robs the enemy ship of powertrain. They're good PvE ships, though they're generally weak at PvP. They are smooth, tapered, and typically symmetrical in design. And they're typically prefit with what one might call shiny nano coatings or paint job. Amarian vessels are also often heavily adorned by elaborate scroll work, bas reliefs, and images of religious veneration. This is also reflected in the architecture of their cities and in their unique vessels. The Amarian ship tree is mirrored by the other race of ship trees, each race having its own unique flavor or variation on these classes and types. Alpha clones are restricted to flying these classes of ships, as indicated here. When it comes to identifying hull characteristics, the ship characteristics are indicated by icon. Mousing over them will let you know what they mean. In this case, the Punisher uses small size modules, gives bonuses to energy turrets, it's designed for combat and designed for armor tanking, whereas the Arbitrator is a medium sized ship, uses drones as its primary weapons platform, and focuses on systems that allow it to disrupt its opponent's tracking and targeting systems, and it gives a bonus to that weapon disruption. Let's talk a little bit more about energy turrets. They have the following characteristics. They deal fixed damage type, which is EM and thermal. Their capacitor use is fairly heavy, and they reload their ammunition almost instantaneously 
T1 weapons have the advantage that they never run out of ammo. Once you fit the ammo crystal, it never degrades. T2 weapons ammunition, however, is volatile and degrades during use. There are two classes of energy weapons, pulse and beam. It's good to know that pulse is basically short range and high DPS with high tracking, whereas beam weapons are long range and high alpha. They strike hard, but they take longer to cycle and they don't track as well. However, they do tend to track at least as well or better than some of the other tracking systems out there. Drones as a weapon system have the following characteristics. They're Effectiveness is really limited only by their control range. If they can reach you, they can hit. Each drone has a racial damage type, and they are damage locked, meaning that uh, the Amarian ships are locked to EM and thermal, and so on. Their size and type is defined into four primary groups, light, medium, heavy, and sentry drones. The difference between these being that the sentry drones are essentially heavy, heavy drones that do not move, but benefit from longer range. The Amar is one of only two races with bonuses for drones. So while there are ships in each group that can use drones, the Amar and the Galente are the only ones which receive ships bonused for them. Each race has advantages in their drones, not just the damage lock that they deal, but there are some which are faster, like the Minmatar, and some which deal more damage, such as the Galente. Now, the trade-off here being higher damage means they're also a little bit slower. If you are happy taking second place in DPS, you could switch to a Kaldari drone and deal kinetic damage and still deal a fair amount of damage while not being quite as slow. Light drones are agile, fast, and good for use against frigate, whereas sentry drones are typically used against larger targets from farther away. When it comes to E-War and the Amar, there is weapon disruption. The application is separate modules for disrupting turrets and missiles. You're interfering with those targeting systems of those weapon platforms. Tracking disruption affects the optimal range and tracking of turrets, whereas missile disruption affects the missile range and damage output of missile platforms. You can use scripts to double the effectiveness of one trait while sacrificing the other. So for example, you could use a script to focus on uh, disrupting the optimal range of turrets so that the weapons don't fire as far, but you won't be able to disrupt their tracking and vice versa. A common ship for looking at for weapon disruption is the Arbitrator. With capacitor warfare, you're working against the powertrain of the enemy ship, and there are separate modules for neutralizing that powertrain or stealing that energy away for your own use. Energy neutralization disrupts the target ship capacitor output, basically putting a wrench in the works of the enemy ship's engine. The energy vampirism robs the target ship of capacitor energy, so you're literally stealing it away for your own use. This is extremely effective against ships employing a shield tank. And the reason for that is that it uses a fair amount of capacitor and core energy output to maintain active reps on a shield-based ship. The challenge here is that if you don't have the power to keep your ship's shields up, you will go down pretty quickly. There are some ships in game which are bonused for capacitor warfare, but none which are bonused so heavily as the Blood Raider ships. These are a faction class of ship uh, employable by those with Amar skills, and I believe it's the Minbatar. Ship bonuses energy turrets. So there are certain ships in the game which are bonused for energy turrets. First of these being the Tormentor, and then in the Destroyer class, the Coercer, the Omen in cruiser size, and the Oracle in battle cruiser. The Oracle is definitely one of my favorite platforms for dealing damage, um, and it is, on top of that, just an absolutely gorgeous ship. And then there's the Apocalypse class battleship. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful platform for engaging in large fleet fight. 
drones have their own groupings within the MR. There's the crucifier, which gets uh, its own small force of light drones it can field. It's also an excellent ship for weapon disruption. The Dragoon, which is the destroyer-sized drone boat for the MR. The Arbitrator, again another drone boat, cruiser size. The Prophecy Battle Cruiser, which also has the advantage of being able to provide um, boosts for ships in a fleet, enhancing their capabilities in battle. And the Armageddon class battleship. For electronic warfare, again, we refer we return here to the uh, Crucifier and the Sentinel. These are the frigate size ships, which are bonus for electronics warfare. The Arbitrator also has its own flavor of tier two ships, the Pilgrim and the Curse. The Pilgrim benefits from being able to uh, cloak and warp cloaked, and the Curse does not show up on directional scan. In terms of E-War, I'd like to make special mention to the Dragoon, my favorite class of ship in EVE Online. As a destroyer, it definitely hits well above its weight class. It is extremely effective when you fit it with energy neutralizers and Nosferatus, and it is just as effective when you fit it with weapon disruption. So you are able to rob an enemy ship of its powertrain while also making it hard for them to hit you with up-close weapons, and you can launch your own fleet of drones to take on the enemy ship and destroy them. To give you an idea of a sample fitting and show you just how effective they are, let's take the example of this ship which I lost in the um, Aquarius region of space back in I think about April of this year, sorry March. Uh, this ship was pretty basically fit, you know, armor plate for buffer, um, adaptive nano uh, plating for some resistance and damage control, um, some extra buffer provided by the rigs, and then a couple of Nosferatus and a couple of Newts in the highs um, with just a Warp Disruptor 2 to hold something down. Now the benefit of this ship is that, you know, it cost 11 million-esque to field the ship, it's not an expensive destroyer by any means, but it's able to take on targets which are much, much blingier than it is. Uh, this Confessor, run by Alexander Seton, um, was very, very well fit, uh, 80 million isk, and was extremely well piloted. Uh, dual wrap, uh, by all means, it should have been able to destroy uh, my Dragoon very, very easily, but this Dragoon and one other with some additional tackle were able to take it down very quickly. And you can see here that the Dragoon was able to dish out the majority of the damage that this ship took. In all honesty, if I had been able to hold him and he wasn't able to pull range, um, I could very easily have killed this, core, or this um, T3D by myself. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you found it informative. If you have, please like, share, subscribe, and of course, check out Eve University's classes at calendar.eveuniversity.org.